Okay, cool. So let's do some card reviews. Keep song requests. Now we're gonna we get we're gonna keep it quiet for the reviews. Okay, so Cleaver's Muscle. Square tail dual card. Okay, it's got a bit of dwarf synergy, I guess. Um five point card Ooh, with careful. Hey John. Five point card with a shield. <laughs> hmm. So can you reliably get use of that shield? If there's some kind of card that maybe says something like destroy an allied shield and boost self by two or something like that, then the shield could be useful. But as it stands now, five for five. So the shield can come into use against AoE, like Lacerate or something. Then you could get a little bit of extra use of that shield. If there's like Dwarf Synergy in the new faction, maybe you can get some, this is a decent card. But as a vanilla five for five, probably not that great. There are literally four provision cards that are better than this. Um, I think out of a five provision card, you'd at least be expecting six value. Um, as a 5 for 5, it's kind of meh. If there's other cards that synergize with this, that cards that actually want you to play dwarfs, this could be okay. In the square tail, not really. I mean, there are cards that do synergize with dwarfs, but not to the extent that you would run this card, I don't think. Um, so as a 5 for 5, it's kind of okay, but I don't expect it to see that much play. 5 for 5 is kind of meh. Unless there's a lot of AoE effects, there's a lot of like just effects that do a lot of AoE, then this could be okay, because then you could actually get use of that shield. But without a reliable way to utilize the shield, I don't think this card is that great. The shield is nice if it gets used. If the shield gets used, it becomes a seven for five. So let's say your opponent, well, it depends. Depends how much you use. So if, let's say your opponent plays Lacerate on this card, then this card becomes a seven for five because it protects it from the shield. Then it's decent. But for the most part, not really that useful. Um, there are situations where the shield will be useful. There are situations, but it's not reliable. And it's hard to predict the value. When you're building a deck, you kind of want to know how much value you're going to get from a card on a consistent basis. Whereas if you're putting this card in your deck, for the most part, it's just going to be a 5 for 5. Sure, there will be situations where the shield will be value. Where you're playing against a no unit deck and you kind of brick some of their cards, or you're playing against a lacerate person and you, you get value from the lacerate. But when you're building a deck without knowing how much value, it's it's if it's, it's, it's un... un um, unforeseen value it's basically just gonna have to be evaluated as a five for five and a five for five as a bronze is kind of meh it's okay it's not it's not it's not terrible it's not just it's just it's just okay so i don't know it depends i don't think this is an amazing card it's okay card it's just kind of okay so we'll have to see about that one um novi novi gradient justice also dual faction scoyatol okay special card 11 provisions Ooh. Play a bronze unit from your deck. If it's a dwarf, spawn and summon its copy on the same row. Huh. So you play a bronze unit from your... So, okay. You play a bronze unit from your deck. If it's a dwarf, summon a copy from this one. So at first glance, right off the bat, I'm going to say this is best with high provision bronze dwarfs. I don't know how many high provision bronze dwarfs exist, but high provision bronze dwarfs are pretty good. This Okay, in that situation then, hmm. so that's to be a base strength card. I guess it's probably good. It's probably designed to be worked with this then, right? 10 point card with two bodies on the board, two dwarf bodies. I mean, hmm. So then the best target is going to be something with high base strength and um, high provision cost bronzes, which so far looks like it's just this thing. Any other bronze uh, dwarf cards that fit that category? Not really, right? It depends how much dwarf synergy we have in the expansion. If there are things that synergize quite nicely with dwarfs, this will be very, very good. Um, but right now, there might be some situations where this is useful. The thing is, it only needs to find one like really good target, and this card could be very, very good. And this card could be it's quite flexible. You could do it in quite a different a lot of situations. But obviously, just one good situation will be pretty decent. But yeah, as soon as dwarf has deploy, I need to be boosted. Oh, they also deploy. Okay, never mind. Then it won't work on that. Then I guess it's just going to be used on this. But on this alone, it's a 10 point. I guess it's a 10 point play that thins. So this onto a cleaver's muscle. It's a 10 point card that thins by one. Which itself is not bad either. That's already not bad. Um, 10 points that thins by one for 11 provisions. It's not terrible. I could definitely see this being used on this. But I mean, the thing is it can brick. This is brickable, so you'd have to keep that in mind. Um, but I could definitely see this being on use on this. It's a, it's a decent thinning play, I guess. Um, it's not bad for thinning. 10, ten points thinning um, with the cost of 11 provisions is not bad. I think the thinning factor alone is... I think this is worth it just for the thinning factor. So I, I do expect to see this being played. This probably will see play. And this, as a vanilla card from hand, I don't think is that great. But 
I guess when played with Novogradian Justice, this makes it worth playing, potentially. We'll have to see if there's any other um, possible dwarfs that you could run with this card, but I guess this for thinning is pretty decent, I suppose. What about Hackman Defenders? Um, maybe. Hacker defenders could be decent. I mean, you could run it in Bruva then, get two defenders on the board. The thing is, the problem with defenders is you need a way to boost them, right? Um, it's good to get two engines on the board at once, but you need a way to boost them. I guess you could go like something like Thunderbolt Potion. Hmm. So what about a Thunderbolt Potion plus this card into double defenders? That's not bad, is it? That's not too terrible. You could play like a Thunderbolt Potion on the board, play this card, get two defenders on the board, get the boost up immediately. It kind of plays like a portal. But a, like a almost a better version of portal, but more expensive. Obviously, much more expensive because you have to run a Thunderbolt as well. Hmm, interesting. This card, I definitely do expect to see some play. I definitely expect people to experiment with this. Um, very interesting. This card also has a 13th category for Donna. I guess that's true. Well, it might be able to help out Donna, but the problem is Donna doesn't have that many ways to help with defenders and stuff. Welcome, we'll chosen see. one. We will see. <clears throat> okay. So, what do we have next? Furco the Sculptor. Deploy melee. Play a crime from your deck. So two points, the tutors of crime. For nine provisions. Hmm. I guess this card entirely depends on how good crime cards are. Very hard to analyze because I don't know how good crimes are. A tutor, as we know in Gwen, tutor abilities are very strong because by playing a tutor ability, it's thinning plus it's reliability. So tutor effects in Gwent in general, historically have always been very good. So right off the bat, I would expect a card like this, if crime decks aren't good, I would expect a card like this to be very, very good because um, being able to play cards from a deck, and it's not that expensive, it's not like a meno. This is a nine provision card, it's not that expensive. Um, plus it's a bit of extra tempo because two um, points. So depending on how good crime cards are, this card could actually be quite decent. I would expect something like this to be quite decent. It can play the previous card. Like here for Nolan Rounds. I mean, it depends. Like, like if crime, if a crime deck is decent, I would I would imagine this something like this would be quite strong. This is this is a bit of tempo as well, and it can help tutor stuff out of your deck. So it depends. If a crime deck is actually good, this might be. Or if there's a one very, very good crime card, or maybe one or two that you want to run as a one of or two of, this could be pretty decent too. Almost all specials are crimes. Okay, well, I mean, this onto this is pretty strong then. This onto this is a lot of points. So overall, I do expect to see this card being played, and I do expect to see this card being played, depending on how good... Cr this card is a bit dependent on how good crimes are, though. This one is pretty good. We'll see what other ones there are. Um, but yeah, this seems decent. Tutor effects and Gwent are normally quite strong. Okay, so what we have here? Halfling Safecracker. Profit 1. So, initially, so basically 4 points for 5 provisions, based on that alone. Boost salt by one for each crime in your hand. Okay, so this is kind of like another Venendal Elite or Doppler or um, Vanguard or one of those cards. Um, gives you a bit of tempo, I guess. If but you obviously want to be having this in a if you're running a couple of crimes cards. So once again, another crime synergy. Um, is this a dwarf? It looks like a dwarf, right? So it might have some use in like dwarf decks. Um, has a deployability, so you can't really use it then with the the Novigradian Justice. So it plays for, f yeah, it plays four initially. I think this is actually not bad. I mean, you need how many, you need what, two crimes and this is already worth six for five. It's a Hobbit. Is Hobbit actually a category in, in, in The Witcher? I don't think it is. Is it? Oh no, it's a, it, wait, I see his hand. Wait, no, there is, he's a, oh, you're right. I see his hand has got from fur on it. Then it's a, it's not, it's not a dwarf. It's right. Halfling? What, what is this category? What, the, what is it called in The Witcher 3? I actually don't know. The art is so good. Yeah, the art's not bad. Um, so, this card actually seems pretty strong. I mean, you get profit 1, so you're, it's already playing 4 for 5, and then boost salt by 1 for each crime in your hand. If you have 2 crimes, it's already, it's already a 6 for 5. That's decent. That, that alone is quite decent. If you have a full crime deck, this card could be, I don't know how many crime cards you'd want to run in a deck, but this card could go up to like 8... 9, maybe 10, depending, who knows, maybe up to 10 points um, for a 5 provision card, which could be insane, but the thing is, it, I don't know if diluting your deck with all those crimes would be good for you, it depends on how good crime decks are, obviously, um, running a bunch of crime cards might be a detriment to your deck, it depends on how many crime cards you run, or want to run, um, but that could be, that could be a very strong card, I mean, Synodizer is quite nice with, in a deck like Cleaver, um, 
if you're running a whole bunch of crime cards, this card would be pretty good in that type of situation. I mean, even by itself, um, if you just have like two crime cards, already a six for five, which isn't bad, and any further ones you have there could make us quite a lot of points. So this is a pretty decent tempo play to make around one. This is like a Doppler, basically. Like I said, depends on how much you want to be running crime cards. If crime cards are kind of meh, then you might only run like two or three in a deck. And if you're only running like two or three crime cards in a deck, this is kind of awkward because you need to have them in hand. So I, th I would say you need to run at least like, at least like, I don't know, probably like six or so crime cards for you to actually want to run these. I would say you need to run at least six. I would say if you have less than six, this card could be kind of unreliable. I would say five or six crime, crime cards you'd have to run to have reliable value with this, I think. Or maybe more even, I would say. Mm. But yeah, not a bad card. I think this card will see play in a crime deck. Definitely in a, in a crime deck. If crime decks are good, this card will definitely see play. It seems decent for a bronze. Um, Harold Gord. All right. Boost self, deploy boost self by zero. Okay, so I'm guessing there's a lot more to it than that, because that sounds terrible. Increase the boost by one for every special card you played this game. Oh boy. <laughs> oh God, I'm scared. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy, here we go. Yeah, we go. <laughs> yeah, we go, chat. <laughs> I think we can already see what's happening here. Um, so the first thing comes to mind is a no unit deck and it's a, it's like a no unit finisher almost. Okay. Um, so how many special cards do you want to play for this? You'd want to play, let's say eight special cards in a game. Then this goes to 10 for seven. It's not bad. If you play like a full to get so basically what's the limit to special cards you have to you can only run 12 in a deck right so <laughs> oh boy you'd have to run like a full a full um no unit deck to get good value with this and uh, in a full no unit deck this card would be a very good finish if your final say let's say you play 12 special cards in a deck um then you play this plays for 14 for seven as a finisher that's not bad <laughs> Uh, I don't really like this card because of the, the things that it incentivizes. In a no unit deck, this, co this card will be auto include and this card would be good in a no unit deck for sure. Um, if no unit decks are a thing in Syndicate, then yes, this card will see a lot of play and will be very strong and... Oh boy. <laughs> I'm not too happy about that, but all right. We'll see how that plays out. I guess there's not much more to it to say about this card. It's pretty much self-explanatory and no unit deck finisher. Monka S. <laughs> All right. Okay, next card. Nothing to see here. Um, okay, what do we have next? Shakedown. Profit three. Boost an allied unit by three. Special card. Gives you three profit. Boost an allied unit by three. So six. It's six points. With three tempo. Um... I mean, it's a, probably, I'm guessing it's got, it's got a crime category, so it might have extra benefits. So let's see Cleaver's leader ability. Um, play a special card from your deck with nine of cost and increase value by one for each crime in your deck. So Cleaver's ability, um, the leader ability, increase value by one for each two crimes you played. So this is with extra half a point. So the crime category then, in a Cleaver deck, the crime category is worth half a point. So this is actually worth six and a half points, basically, and it can also be worth more, I guess, because of... Maybe a halfling safe cracker. So a halfling, so it could, yeah, it could actually be worth like seven and a half. The more crime cards you have, or the cards that rely on crime, the better the value there is. So, I mean, this isn't too bad, but it's a special card though. So we'll see. the nice thing is, like I said, this is not a no unit card because boost an ally unit by three. You have to have a unit on the board. So you can't use this in a no unit deck well you can but you shouldn't so the nice thing is, is this is a special card so it doesn't add to this being a no unit card which is nice you have to have a unit on the board boost out a unit by three um which is nice so it's not like you can't it's not like you can play this in a no unit deck because you do have to have a unit on the board to get this value um so that's nice at least um it has some synergy it's worth half a point extra putting this card in your deck is worth half a point extra with cleaver so with with um with with cleaver as a leader this is already worth this is already six and a half or five 
and then other cards are synergized with with um prime like this well, this turns this into a seven and a half point card if you have two of these it turns this into an eight and a half point card um this makes an extra point so this this turns this into a a nine and a half point card i mean it's kind of difficult to evaluate it like that because you could also count this as boosting this increasing this thing's value but it's it's it, ha it has synergy um there is synergy so i think this card's actually not too bad um the, the fact that it has no bodies kind of a bit awkward i mean playing special cards with no bodies is that our low tempo is very awkward but i think this card might see some play in crime decks this does seem somewhat viable in crime decks so i think that's okay um also i like the fact that it has the boost and our units so it's not it's not a no unit card this card at least you have to have a unit on the board which is nice so i like that about it at least so it's not a no unit card which is great um okay tunnel draw profit one so it plays for six for six fee three may destroy an artifact so six for six fee three if you want to spend three destroying artifacts so i guess this is this is, this is um syndicate's artifact removal card so it's kind of like syndicate's version of ida or um or whatever um nithral whatnot i think that's okay fee three destroying artifact that's probably worth it um i mean artifacts are worth how much points right okay so an, uh, any card in Gwent is going to be at least four provisions, right? Most artifacts are going to cost five, six, much more. I think this is actually a very good. Um, I think it's actually a very strong. Um, so if you destroy an if you destroy an artifact, right, you get one profit and you spend three. So it's basically you lose two, right? So you net minus two coins. So it basically plays. It basically plays three points to destroy an artifact or six points to destroy no artifact. So Ida plays four points to destroy artifact, or she plays seven points to not destroy artifact. But she's an extra she's an extra two provisions. So if you compare this card to Ida, Ida plays for four plus destroying artifact at the cost of two provisions extra. Where this card cost, this card is three to destroy an artifact at the cost of one provision less. So this already seems somewhat better than Ida. Can also destroy multiple artifacts. Wait, so you could spend three multiple times to destroy multiple artifacts. If that's the case, then this card is really good. I think this 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 is very this is a decent artifact removal card. I think this is a pretty strong artifact removal card. This is somewhat decent. This is this seems quite decent to me as an artifact removal card. I think this is worth running. Um, I think this card is actually quite good. I think this can this can fit into any deck. Um, this can pretty much fit into any syndicate deck. And if it doesn't hit, hit an artifact, it's still 6 for 6. If it does hit an artifact, it's 3 plus an artifact you destroy. I think this is decent. This is this looks like a decent card run. This actually might be one of the best artifact removals in the game. Um, this looks like... It, initially, this looks better than Ida to me. This seems like it's 1 point or 1 provision better than Ida. Um, and Ida is pretty much the best artifact removal in the game. Um, so yeah, I think this is just a really good artifact removal. This is a pretty solid artifact removal, I think. Nithral is kind of okay too. Nithral is also a decent artifact removal, but he has dominance... You know shenanigans um but yeah this seems like a decent artifact removal i think overall this card is pretty strong this card is quite a strong card i think it's a very very strong artifact removal i'm happy to see this in the game i like this good artifact removal cards makes people running artifacts a lot more you know um hesitant to run artifacts when cards like this exist so i like this card i think this is a decent card pretty good card very strong artifact removal i like it um caesar bolzen Deploy, trigger the profit abilities of adjacent units. Hmm. Fee 3, boost an ally unit by 2. Okay, so the first thing I'm seeing here is he's the Viagraph of Syndicate. This, to me, is like the Viagraph of Syndicate. This literally looks like Viagraph of Syndicate. So, trigger the profit abilities of two adjacent units. So the nice thing about this, though, it's two adjacent units. It doesn't have to be bronzes. It can be gold as well. So if there's like a gold card that says maybe like plus, I don't know, let's, let's, say, there's a, let's say there's a gold card that says add four coins or profit six, right? Um, let's just profit six. Then this card is a red, okay, that's a bit strong. Let's say, let's say profit two. Okay, okay, let's, let's, let's say, okay. It seems like there's a lot of profit two cards. Let's say you put this card in between two profit two cards, right? Then he plays for four plus two, four, he plays eight for eight, right? So if there's any other cards that have more than profit two, then this guy can go up to like maybe profit 9, 10. Um, the thing is, those cards do have to stick on the board. So if they die, it's kind of spooky. So 
it's kind of like fire griff in a way um but with the fact that he can do it on golds instead i don't know how many what is the best what is the best um profit card in the game right now how much what card gives you the most profits besides the leader ability how much profit do we get with the most what is the most profit we have one two so it's decent on this i guess one one hmm So far, it seems like it's only two. two. Two seems to be the most. Um, so if you do it on two twos, it's worth it's eight for eight. I would imagine there'll be probably some other cards that have more than two. But on 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 just twos, it's if you do it on two twos, it's worth four extra points. I mean, four four crowns, so it's eight for eight. Fee three, boost and ally unit by two. That's not worth it. You spend three coins or crowns, sorry, to boost an ally unit by two. So you net minus one. Heh, that seems terrible. <laughs> I mean, if you really want to keep something alive, sure, but... Or if you don't have any ways to spend stuff, I guess this is okay. But it's inefficient, you're spending three to gain two. That seems like it's below the the the, the threshold or the um, curve when it comes to coin with crowns. I don't think that's very efficient. Spending three to boost by two, I don't think that's worth it. I don't think that's worth it, especially when there's bronze cards that can do that more efficiently. Like, um... Like this card, for example. This card turns them into... Turns your crowns into coins. Sorry, your crowns into points at an efficient rate of one to one. This this has a much more efficient way than that card, and that's a bronze card. So I don't think the secondary ability is really great. The secondary ability is kind of meh. The primary ability might be okay if you are able to find something that has maybe three or four pro um, profit. Then this is really good. If you can f if you can put this between like so, let's say you can put this between a card that has three profit and a card that has four profit, right? Then it's plus seven, so it's eleven for eight, which is not bad. That's decent. But um, overall, it's kind of okay. It depends what other profit cards we get. If there's better profit cards in the game, this is okay. This is not bad. This secondary ability kind of seems really weak. I mean, I guess it's just it's it's there, so you can have the option of doing it if you really want to. But I doubt you'd really gonna want to do this very often. But we'll see. The fee ability is just law friendly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I doubt you're going to want to do this very often. But this is completely dependent on how much profit. Right now, we've only seen two profit cards. So this can only be an 8 for 8 on that regard. Um, but I'm sure we'll see more. And if there are more that have more profit, then this could be better. Um, so far, we'll have to see. But the secondary ability is not going to be see much use. But sure, let's see. Okay, Kurt. Intimidate. So he's like the harmony card then, I guess. 4 for 8. Deploy melee locker units. Deploy range purify units. Um, a four point lock that's basically like the harmony of crime. All right, every time you play a crime card, it gets boosted by one. Okay, so let's compare him to a similar card, Morin. Right, Morin is a lock card, but she has the she has the utility of damaging instead of purifying. He also needs to get at least I'd say one crime card to be played to get the same value as Morin. I think this is just okay. Um. This is kind of lackluster, I think. There's more efficient locks in the game, I guess. As a syndicate faction, I mean, it's better than something like Doragre, I guess, but um, the Purify category is not that impressive. I guess, I guess, okay. So you can obviously use the unlock. Maybe in an engine overload deck, this is not terrible because you can use them to unlock one of your cards. In an engine overload deck, maybe this is not terrible because you can use the Purify to unlock one of your cards or you can lock one of your opponent's cards. So I'd only really to expect to see this guy being played maybe in an engine overload deck in um in Syndicate. I think that's where you'll probably see him seeing play. In an engine overload deck in Syndicate. Um he's kind of initially looks like a worse Morin, but like I said, if you're running an engine overload deck, the purifier unit might be useful because you can unlock one of your units. And then you have the this will actually be the primary use and this will be the secondary use to lock an enemy unit, but purify gabble. Yeah, I mean that's a pretty cool cheeky play you can sometimes make. But yeah, overall, um, I would only expect to see this guy in a, in a full-on engine overload deck where you actually really want to unlock something that's important. Otherwise, a 4 for 8 is kind of expensive just to unlock. Um, it's kind of just... Eh. I think this is mostly going to see only play inside of a um, engine overload type of deck. Okay, Vivaldi Bank. Okay, this is a, t this is a wall of text. <laughs> so, 9 provisions, profit 1. Look at the top card from your deck plus an additional card for every crown you possess. Okay, so for every crown you have, you get to look at further cards in your deck. Alright. 
It's also kind of interesting because you get to see information about that. You could play that in like round one or two and get to see your top decks, just kind of useful. Um, play the card for free. The top card, sorry. Play the top card for free or play another card for your deck. E cost equal to the distance from the top card. Shuffle the remaining cards. Okay, so you shuffle afterwards, so you don't get to see your top decks afterwards. So the, the shuffle afterwards is interesting. So you don't get to um don't get to see future draws then. Um, okay. So basically, you get to look at the, the top. So if you have five if you have five crowns, right? You get to see the top five cards in your deck. You are allowed to take the top dark the top card from your deck for free and play it. Or if you want to take a card that's further from the top, you have to spend an additional crown. So if you want to take the second card from the top, you have to play, you have to spend one crown. If you want to take the third crown from the, the third card from the top, you have to spend two crowns, and so on and so forth. So the further the card is from the top, the more crowns you'd have to spend. Um, it's a special card, nine provisions. So it's almost like I guess you could compare it to Royal Decree. Um, but you have to spend the you have to spend, you can't choose anything, right? Because you have to spend additional crowns. It's, it's a better Royal Decree. Okay, so when this card is better than Royal Decree is when you get to take that, if, if the top card of the deck is the card you want, then this is a better Royal Decree. Plus you get a bit of information. So it's actually a lot better than Royal Decree. Um, but, and it gives, you a bit, it gives you a bit of flexibility in regard. But the thing is, I guess this is okay. I mean, Fisher King make this makes this a bit more attractive. Fisher King makes us a bit more attractive. You could combo this with Fisher King, I guess. If it's a very, very important card in your deck, maybe you're running a very, very high provision card that you really need to find. I could maybe see running a card like this. It has some synergy with things like Fisher King, but then you have to spend another high provision card, well, medium provision card to run that, and it's kind of clunky because you need both of them, and it's... Mm. I don't know. It's it, it's an interesting card. It's definitely interesting. And it might be useful in a deck where there's a very, very important card you absolutely need to find. Like, your whole deck is built around that card. Then this card might see some play, but then you, again, you could just run Royal Decree for it anyway. Um, this card is only really better than Royal Decree if the card on top is the top card, your card, uh, the top card in your deck or the second from the top card in your deck. Then this card is better than Royal Decree. Anything beyond that, this card becomes worse than Royal Decree. Just Fisher King, Prince Willem. Yeah, I mean, you could also just do that. But although if Prince Willem is a minus two point play, so you have to keep that into account. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a more inconsistent version of Royal Decree. It can be better than Royal Decree, but it can also be a lot worse. So overall, I'd say this is kind of, it's an interesting card, but initially, I mean, it's probably a crime card, right? I guess. And if it is a crime card, it has extra benefits. Um, it has synergy with a lot of other things. You can has, it might boost up things like, so the thing is a crime, if it has a crime category, right, it has synergy with this, it has synergy with your leader ability, so it does have synergy with other things that rely on crime. In that regard, it becomes a lot, it becomes more attractive to use this card, right? But it's still inconsistent. The fact that you can't predict what you're going to get, and the fact that this card could be either really good or really bad, does make it a bit more, I would say, unattractive to run it in a deck. But the crime category might, I think it's not crime, if it's not crime, then I really don't expect to see this being played much. If it is crime, maybe... But if it's not crime, I really doubt I'm going to see this card being played that much because it's a more inconsistent version of Royal Decree. Um, sometimes it can be better than Royal Decree, but I think for the most part, it'll actually just end up being worse than Royal Decree.